Hey guys, welcome to RK Kaiju where we'll open up the Mega Spice Cafe box. This month we have is October. If you are new to this, um, we get three mangas a month, normally first editions, and snacks to enjoy it all. So, let's take a look. I always love her pamphlets. She has the most adorablest artwork on them all the time. All right, let's see what we got. We got Cookie Bites. Nice, some butter cookies. I do love butter cookies, so. And next up, we've got Purple Stars. <laughs> I guess they're considered a little Halloween. Might be chocolate flavor. Um, the good thing is, is in her pamphlet near the back, she often does kind of put what all these snacks are. Because um, as you'll see, most of them come with um, Japanese writing. <laughs> so if you can't read it, don't worry. The pamphlet normally tells you all the information. I'm going to guess these are chocolate flavored. Ooh. And as always, which seems to be a common theme in this box. So if you watch my other videos, you already know. Um, so she tends to put at least one corn chip, well, corn chip, corn roll um, in all of her boxes now. Um, they are absolutely my favorite. They're like a little Funyun and they come in all sorts of flavors. This one is a Go Go Halloween and it has a kitty cat. So I'm not quite sure what flavor it would be. <laughs> the kitty cat on it looks like a chive. Smells like a chive. So. Hmm, so good. My money's still on chive. That is love these. They're delicious. All right, next up is enriched with vitamin A pillows. UB filled crackers? I have no clue what UB is. UBE is. Let's see. Um, filling? Sugar? Milk? Oh, radish for coloring. I was like, radish flavor? Let's give it a try. This one's actually in English. So, in case you all thought that I can now magically read Japanese, I uh, hate to break it to you. It's in English. <laughs> all right. I can't place what it smells like. It smells so familiar. They are actually, indeed, little pillows. So they're a little bit crunchy with a nice little icing on the inside. You can use just a little bit more icing because like a bit in half you don't really taste as much. So let's try a whole one. It tastes absolutely a lot better eating it as a whole not half so you get that extra icing. That's really good though. Still curious what UBE feel, feeling is though. It's really good though. I'll add that to my list. It does taste a little funny eating after this, so I don't suggest pairing these two together. I'd keep them separate, but I don't know. These are pretty good. I'd give them a try. All right. Next, we have some sort of witch with her magic ball. And it is a spicy corn chip. Oof. I wonder how spicy. Normally overseas spiciness isn't like really our kind of spicy. It's just like a tad bit. So. <laughs> well, it looks like I'm not eating them. Oh, there it goes. 
I'm gonna have to start bringing scissors because I apparently can't open bags. It smells sweet. Kind of smells like teriyaki. If you guys ever had like the teriyaki chips, That's kind of what they smell like. Those are gross. Um, do not suggest these. Um, maybe if you like the Kix cereal, you might like these, but they, um, they don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's like eating cardboard. Those, those kind of gross. No, I kind of wish I had a side drink. Alright, next we got Choco Knots, and as you may guess, chocolate covered pretzels. Okay. Um, um, it looks like our last nut is a trick or treat box. That is really cute. It comes in a tiny coffin that says Happy Halloween. Mm, let's see, how do I safely open this without destroying the box? Because the box is like super cute. Okay. Oh, almost. oh wow. It is an assortment of candy. <gasps> There's Pokemon cards in here. <gasps> oh, look at that. I got Pokemon trick or treat cards. I totally missed out on these last year. They seem to be a lot more around this year. I just haven't gotten around to getting them. Oh, that's so exciting. What a great surprise. Oh, that's just fabulous. All right, I'll open that in a second. Let's get to the candy real quick. We have a bloody strawberry. Super cute, feels really hard. So it's one, probably one of those hard candies. We have some sort of jelly and a nice cute little ghost with his little jack-o'-lantern. I will eat this one because surely it tastes better than that horrible candy that I just had, or chippies. Ooh, it smells like grape. Mm, of course, I did not open it all the way. There it goes. Mmm. See, little jellies. I like them. That's really good. Alright, we have a Lucan candy. Looks like it's possibly like a little sour. It's got like a lemon on it. It's bendy. I've never had these before. I've never seen them. So if you guys like these, just let me know. Same with any of these snacks. Like if these snacks are your jam, let me know. What do you guys think of them? Um, got some random yellow lollipop. We've got a happy Halloween soft candy. Oh, and if you guys also got this box, um, let me know if you guys got the exact same candy. I'm quite curious if other people got different Halloween candy. We got a little lifesaver with a kitty. And last but not least, we got some sort of hard Fuji home pie with a cute little monster. And then the inside of the box is actually really adorable. Just look at the cute little ghost. Alright. I swear, I love Halloween decorations. Just Halloween. Just it's my holiday. Alright. Let's see what we got. And if you guys are Pokemon fans, let me know what is your favorite Pokemon. Mine's is Sandshrew. <laughs> I know, most random, but I do, do like him. Alright, there's the first one. Oh, it's a shiny. It's been dark. And... shame that it only comes like with three cards but you know Pokemon cards 
That's really cool. I'm glad we got that. Let's see. Fix that focus. All right. All that's left is our ramen and our drink. As always, here's our chopsticks for the ramen. And this month is special chicken flavor. Wonder what makes it special. Very, very special. <laughs> right? And a very, very cute little drinky. I've never seen this one. No added sugars, 100% juice. And a cute little meow meow from the container. Oh, it's adorable. Alrighty, so that is all of our snacks. Since it was Halloween, we did get a little bit of extra treats for Halloween. Um, we got a ramen, and always we got our specialty drink. Mmm, that's really good. I love juices. All that's left is our three mangoes. So, normally, like in her box, she tells us what next month is. We didn't get a notice. So, completely surprised as you are, or what we got. Give me one moment to get them open. And then, on a side note, before we get to the manga, she always does give these 10 points. I know I've never talked about them, but I think, apparently, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you collect 10 of these, you can send them into her and get a free box. If I really need to find mine and send them in and let you guys know, but if you have done that before, um, comment down below. Let me know what you got in your box. If she, like, sent you an old one or a completely new one, I would love to know um, if you guys ever turned these points in. All right, let's get down to the manga. The first one up is Meruko-chan Official Comic um, Anthology. God, that looks really creepy. All right, creepy, crawly, grotesque. Such is the daily life of Miko, and company when ghostly specters lurk around every corner. Made a new cast of spine-tingling, blood-curling monsters in the official comic mythology. That's pretty cool. I'll let you see all the hard authors that have gone into this work. And of course, I'll give you a preview of the inside. Very nice of them. They give a little bit of a color art. I always appreciate that. It does have some monsters. Right. I am not familiar with this. I am excited. This one does look extremely, extremely cute and creepy. There is tons of monsters in here. So, um, and as always, let me know if you guys read of any of these mangas, if they're your favorite, if you were like, eh, or if you liked any other of the mangas from the artist. Let me know that as well. Help expand my knowledge. All right, next one up is Night of the Living Cat. Dun, dun, dun. You will all be cats. Oh, cats will walk the earth. A virus spreads across the world, transforming all humankind into wild, slavering furry beast. Cats, to be precise. Those few survivors who remain human take refuge in the dark corner of the earth as they fight it back against the feline hordes. Kanji, a man with no memory of his past, yet deep knowledge of cats, struggles to hold up his own with his wits and will to survive. Yet the virus transmits merely through cuddles. <laughs> and Kanji finds kittens so hard to resist. Is his willpower strong enough to withhold the hair-raising cat of That's great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I'm actually really torn if I want to read this one first or this one, but I will definitely be reading both of these right after this because they just sound so entertaining. <laughs> That's funny. All right, and the last one is 
Pokemon don't you have that? I was <laughs> not expecting that. That is kind of cool. I've I have like the original Pokemon manga. I haven't bought one in a long time. Um, so this says Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, inspired by the Blue Rescue Team and the Red Rescue Team. All right. What would you do if you turned into a Pokemon? Gengar is a regular school boy. Oh, sorry. That does not. Sorry. Let's try that again. Genji is a regular school boy until he wakes up one day as a Torik. Torchic. Before um, Genji could figure out how to change back, a friendly Mudkip convinces him to become his partner and form a rescue team that's saving adorable Pokemon from disaster. It's exciting work, but can Genji save himself? And will he ever be human again? And his transformation turned to Pokemon. Well, Topsy Turvy, the venture and the mystery is on. I don't know what my po my favorite Pokemon game would be, though. I do have a bad habit of buying every game that they release <laughs> and give it a try. I do really enjoy the originals. I think the first one I got was Blue Virgin. Um, so, I don't know if I count that as my favorite, though. Um, a lot of the new ones are good, too. Hmm. I don't know. Let me know what your favorites are. Alright. And, if you are more of a Pokemon fan or a Digimon fan, I will share my results later in the comments. Alright. Alright, so that's all three. I don't know if you really count this first. It might just be a single edition. Um, so we got the Pokemon, we got the Knights of the Living Cats, and we've got the um, Mariko Chan's anthology. Alright, all that's left is to go through the pamphlet. Um, just a reminder that she does go into the artist and a little bit more into these. Um, so let's take a look give you guys a first quick peek. All right, let's see, let's see. We'll start with the Knight of the Living Cat. All right, not as much known about Hawkman and Matcha Roots since they're relatively new to the manga industry. Their first ever work, Night of the Living Cat, is a Japanese manga series that has been serialized into the monthly comic garden since November 2020 issue. The series was published with Taku using the Hawkmen and Tommy Tarukmi using Mecha Roots. In June 21, the series was nominated for the next coming manga award in 21 and is currently ongoing. Wow, volume four. Four will be released April 9, 2024. So that means one and three are out, but man, 2024, that's so long. What, six months till April? That's still too long, but. Ah. All right. Next one up is for the Pokemon. Maktio is a Japanese manga artist from Kobe City. He has debuted in 1999 with the work Mika Singh Gatekeeper in Hyper Crow Crow Summer Issue. After that, he mainly serialized works in Shagun's Monthly. He has mostly created comics for the Zoids and Pokemon series. Another great series, if you guys haven't seen it, is the original Zoids. I know they did multiple different kinds, but the OG Zoids you can never go wrong with. Um, okay, but the other works include... Um, Champions of the Seven Heavens, Crossfight Be Damn, and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Or, um, and a six-part manga based on the video game Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Blue Rescue Team and Red Rescue Team was the first to appear in Japanese Kuru comic in the fall of 2005. An English version was released to Nintendo Power from the September 2006 issue to February 2007 issue after the manga's last volume. He released the entire English translation in a serialized one book. That's really nice. I like when they condense it down into one book. And last but not least, a Japanese um, cartoon artist born on Halloween. 
Nice. In January 2004, um, became a finalist for his work cleaner for the Jump 12 Newcomer Manga Award, which is a monthly recruitment project by Weekly Shoujin. In 2006, he entered again and won his work Nidu and his debut work is published in Go Go Jump in December of the same year. After that, he's at work as an assistant for Toshio um, Mastia. Forgive me if I'm butchering that. And posted a one shot of his work online. In 2018, when Tomiki announced his next work, um, Mariko Chan on Twitter, it was retweeted more than 60 times and became a hot topic as it was getting more than 1,800, 1,080, 180,000 likes. It was then serialized Comic Walker on November 2nd of the same year. Well, good job. That's fabulous. So it looks like, I guess since this is an anthology, it doesn't have any sequels, but, okay. And then the next side, she normally goes over the main book, but like I said, we didn't really get one this year, uh, but we'll see what she has to say. All right, let's see. Pokemon Dungeon. All right, Tezuki may be the CEO of the Pokemon Company now, but in 2005, he used to work for Shunsoft, it was the company where he came up with the first ever Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. Um, Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team for the Game Boy Advance. His biggest inspiration came from the style of gameplay and depth of the Mystery Dungeon franchise, namely the Taloon's Great Adventure Mystery Dungeon. And because Chunsoft was going through a bad business period, the popularity of these games were virtually saved by the company from bankruptcy. The gameplay. You start the game as a human that has been turned into a Pokemon and your Pokemon partner finds you upon waking. You talk. You take the personality test and determine which kind of Pokemon you'll be and throughout the game you'll add more Pokemon to your team while navigating randomly, generating dungeons and collecting items. The more the move and actions are more turn based as you use basic attacks, Pokemon moves, and then items and enemies. Alright. Your Miracle Chain manga is off is an official comic anthology based on the original. A manga anthology book is usually a collection of short manga stories by either a single or multiple manga artists. The stories are typically based on the world from the original story, so if you haven't read um, Mariko Chan's Volume 1, we highly recommend checking it out. Oh! In the story, Mariko Chan is a high school student who suddenly gains the ability to see invisible monsters the others cannot. These monsters frequently approach her, asking if she can see them initially. Mingo tried to ignore them, but it becomes more increasingly difficult as she witnesses how these creatures disturb the people around her, including her best friend. Protect her loved ones of these monsters, Mingo strive to continue her daily life, even though she encounters with these terrifying beings, often bring her to tears. The series is not only a manga, but an anime. I was going to say, I thought I had watched this anime. It sounded familiar. That's cool. I've always wanted to read the manga. Like I said, I've started the anime. So if you guys have read it, let me know if you like, and especially if you watch the anime, which one you liked better, the anime or the manga. Alrighty. So that is all the information about our lovely mangas. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the snackies. Um, okay, popular YouTube star Aphemum. A-P-H-M-A-U, sorry if I butchered that, actually came up with the art for this. So they had designed it with box snacks. So that's really cool. Um, let's see. So she doesn't tell us what the corn stick is. It just says corn stick. Butter cookies are from the Philippines. And those nasty puff chips. Yeah. All right. Halloween won't be complete without candies from your Japanese and China. What's inside your treat box is a mystery fruit snack and a butter or sweet potato flavored pie. Ooh, I wonder if we got butter or sweet potato. Okay, a, Hall a Halloween theme haishu, a core shaped pineapple from pine, a grape or jelly pack. I got grape, a gourmet chocolate, and a surprise treat, which is your Pokemon trading cards. Alrighty, so that is everything but it appears that this time she did not give us a preview for next month so i have no clue what the theme is i'll try to go on the site and see if she has it um but if not 
that is all that I have for you guys. So I appreciate you tuning in. Bye.